Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about Faraday's Law. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you where Faraday's Law comes from and then I'm going to introduce sort of that formula there and why it's important. So Faraday's Law is instrumental in the generation of electricity. And it's this whole idea of magnetic fields causing a force on, an, on a moving charge which, of course, if a charge starts to move, that is, of course, due to an electric field, which means that we, we have a potential difference. We have electricity, we have potential. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to derive it. You don't need to know how to derive it, but it kind of explains where it comes from. All right. So the idea of potential, electric potential, is de defined by this formula here. The electric potential is the energy over the charge. Now, energy is, the base formula for energy is force times distance, okay? And the force that is causing this potential to exist is a magnetic one. So I'm going to replace my F here with the force for magnetic. So it's F equals Bill. So I'm going to put that in there, and I end up with. Let me get my red hand. I end up with B I L times by the distance over the charge. Now, the length of the wire times by the distance. A length by a distance is the area of the object itself. So this thing here is an area. This thing here, this I and Q, this is actually quite important here. So this here is area. This thing comes back to my idea that current is the rate of flow of charge, which means that I divided by Q is 1 over time. So it means I can replace this bit here with area, and I can relate this bit here to 1 over time. So it would be times A over time. This here, we've done it before in my previous video, this here is flux or phi. So what this is telling me here, that potential equals flux over time. And of course, when we're dealing with a coil of wire, we're going to talk about the flux linkage. Now, for energy to be produced, for electricity to be produced, there must be a potential difference. So for electri uh, electricity to be produced, there must be a potential difference or a change in potential okay so taking this formula here I'm just gonna put that electric there for a change in potential I'm going to need a change of flux over a change in time Okay, and this is the basis for Faraday's law. Okay, in your data sheet, Faraday's law is written like this. If I just grab this board here, <coughs> the EMF, the energy produced, the potential produced.
is N times the change in flux over the change in time. So this means for an object to generate energy, a wire must experience a change in magnetic field strength over a period of time. And a way I can explain that, something you could do, is that if I had a coil of wire here, this is my coil, if I had a car here with some magnets on them, if that car sped through here, this object would feel the magnetic field of this magnet. So I'm actually going to draw a proper magnet here. I'm actually going to draw a proper north, south, draw the field lines in, like that, oops, wrong way. As my car goes through this coil of wire, this coil of wire is experiencing a change in magnetic field. So when it, the poles go in, it gets really strong. As it gets away, it gets weaker. And then it gets quite strong again when the, these bits come in here. And of course, the faster it does it, the shorter amount of time it feels this as it goes through. So as this car goes through this uh, coil of wire here, this coil will experience a change in flux, this bit here. So if I do this in red, so as goes through coil experiences change in flux. Okay. And of course, this change in time, the faster the car goes the less time it takes to go through. So what this means here, that for numbers, let's say it takes 0.3 seconds for the car to fully go through, and in that time, the car experiences one millitesla down to zero millitesla and then up again to one millitesla. The maximum EMF it is going to generate, okay, is going from this one to this zero. Okay. So let's just do some calculations for this. So, it takes 0.3 seconds to fully go through, and I go from the, f the object fills 1 millitesla down to 0 millitesla, or 0 tesla, and it goes back up to 1 millitesla again. Okay. I'm going to assume that it takes 0.15 to get halfway, and then 0.15 to get to the other. So, my change in my flux is B times A. And the biggest change I have is going from 1 to 0. So my magnetic field strength, my change in magnetic field strength is 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Let's say that this has an area of 0.05 meters squared. Okay. So I can work out my change in flux. So 1 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 0.05 equals 5 times 10 to the minus 5 Webers. Okay. Now let's say my quill had 100 turns to it. <coughs> my 
that change in flux linkage equals 5 times 10 to the minus 3 Weber turns. So the EMF I would make would be 5 times 10 to the minus 3. So my change in flux linkage divided by my change in time, which took me 0 0.15 seconds. So the amount of potential difference I would make would be 0 0.033 volts. So that is my biggest potential difference because that is my biggest change in flux. Now, if I was going faster, this number would be going smaller, which means I would generate more potential difference. And this is true for wind turbines. Wind turbines are a coil that is spinning, and the faster they spin, the more electricity they generate in the um, generator. Okay. Now this is really important that for Faraday's law, which is this here, that you can only use this for an object that is changing flux. So going from one flux linkage to another. So it could be, for example, like my car going through this here, going through this. So my object is going from one millitesla to naught millitesla. Okay. And then from naught millitesla to one millitesla again. Um, it could be like this. It could be an object moving from this way into a magnetic field to this way. Okay. It's an object that's just feeling a change in flux. Now, a rotating object is a different formula entirely. So, I'll be talking about that in another video. So, this here is Faraday's law. And to verbally, to verbally explain this, to verbally explain Faraday's law in words, is that a current carrying wire will Correction. A wire experiences a change in flux. So an object experiences a change in flux. This generates an EMF or if you would like to say an electric field. If there is a potential difference, electrons would flow. This generates an EMF which will generate a current. So Faraday's law is all about a wire or a piece of material experiencing a change in flux. This generates an EMF, this letter here, potential. This electric field that is made will generate a current because electrons in that material will start flowing towards the positive or the negative. The bigger the change in flux, the bigger the EMF you generate. The faster you do it, okay, so the change in time, the faster that you do it, so time decreases because you're doing it faster, the more EMF that you would generate. And the bigger the potential difference that you make, the more current will flow, the more electricity that you make. And that is Faraday's law.